Hello, welcome back to Spurwood Hunt 365. I'm DJ. We are actually doing a part two of this video for Jersey's Savage 720. For those of you who have been waiting on it, I do apologize for the delay in this video being put out. But without further ado, part two, reassembly of the Savage 720. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and start putting this back together. So the first thing we want to do is we want to drop our spring down in there. Go ahead and drop that back down in there. Since it helped us take it out, we'll use that to help us push it back in. All right, got our spring in there. We're gonna take our detent, put it in there. Got to line that up with that spring. Get it pushed down in there. All right, so now just like took it out, we're gonna put it at an angle like this above your plunger and then squeeze it down and push back in kind of a rotating action to get that in there and then you gotta line that up you can look through this hole and try to see if I can do it here it'd be fun to get that so get that to where it's lined up to where you can see all the way through it but what I do is I just take the pin that we just took out of there put it down to where it'll touch it and then you kind of move it around until that just seats down in there you see how it just pushes in it is that easy and then just take your and your punch and finish it off making sure we were flush on both sides all right our ejector is back in and working just fine Good. now we're gonna put this bad boy back in here you can see how we're gonna put your a link and your locking bolt in you see how it's got that groove right there that your locking bolt sits into from this side here so what you want to do is you put your link in through the top first line that groove up like such and then let it sit down inside there and that is that easy it sits, just sits down right inside there all right now we're going to get our brand new firing pin out here i'll show you the difference between the two here once i get this out of the bag here so this is the broken one this is the new one quite a bit quite a bit broken off there so no wonder this thing didn't shoot like it was supposed to. So anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and discard this as well. All right, now we're gonna put the firing pin inside here. Now, in order to get this to work, the firing pin actually slides into this hole here. You can see how that kind of makes sense, right? That's gonna fall in here. But the link and the locking bolt have gotta kinda, you have to kinda play with them, kinda wiggle them back and forth. <coughs> Excuse me. You got the wiggle back and forth. So the pin, this fire pin is gonna sit in here just like this. All right. So I wanted you to see that. So this this groove right here has got to be downward. So you're gonna slide that in. Now again, you gotta wiggle your link to get it in there. You gotta kind of move your locking bolt around. You'll see eventually you get to the point to where it just slides in. Now you lock this part here. There again, you gotta bring your link down and get the link to move and then it'll actually allow you to put your firing pin where it's flush. Once you're able to get your firing pin to where it's flush on the back of the actual breech block, that's when you grab the pin here, which you can see has these grooves in it, right? Take that and put that back in where it goes, making sure that it seats properly. See there again? Oh, went off camera. All right, well, I didn't mean to move off camera, but I did, I apologize. So again, even when putting this pin in there, you kinda kinda wiggle your locking bolt and your link around to get that to where this will see your firing pin will sit properly. But this actually makes sure that your firing pin doesn't leave unless it's supposed to. So and it also makes sure that the gun won't fire unless this is locked and in the right position. And now it'll actually allow you to fire. So that is what we wanna see. You want to see that our firing pin is actually protruding from your breech block which means it'll actually fire now and we also took care of a damaged breech block because this is nice and not broken not cracked so perfect now we've got that together now we're going to move over to our trigger assembly all right now that we got this all cleaned up we're going to put this back together and we're going to start off just where we left off got to put the ball back into our safety switch here so just kind of drop that down 
get that in a hole like such and then go ahead and making sure that this is in a downward position obviously you want to push that in here you're gonna line up those holes you can see how that works just line up those grooves you can see the groove there just line up those grooves there press that in get that down into that groove and then bring that back in so you're gonna flathead screwdriver press on that be careful not to lose your grip here don't want to take out your fingers and process line that hole up just like so you can see how that went up and over the ball just like it's supposed to ball is in there ready to go all right so now that you got that back in you want to put your safety in now what I want to show you here is you can see how you get into the light here you see how there's a groove oh, here let me show you it'd be easy to show you this way see how there's a groove right there so what you want to do is there's a longer side of this where that groove is the longer side needs to be going to your left okay so you push that in there that way when it's on safe it's blocking it right and then when it's on fire it's lined up just like that you see how that groove goes in there so that's fire that's safe all right that's what you want to make sure of there all right now we're going to put in our trigger so you want to make sure your triggers in the right orientation putting that down in there like so and you want to make sure that this front end comes all the way down and then line up your hole because if you don't what's going to happen is you're going to be too far forward and the firing the trigger won't op won't operate like it's supposed to so you're going to have a little bit of an upward push because the other thing that's kind of pushing on there the same thing is pushing your safety down in the back it's kind of pushing up against your firing pin here that's fine but you gotta kind of maneuver that up and down and you'll get it to where it'll go in that hole for you all right got that lined up send that in and again you want to make sure this front piece is underneath or near the trigger guard you can see as you can tell when this goes forward push this back it's a safety push that back and then now your trigger can go all the way back as opposed to just right there so that is why we made sure that groove is in the right spot all right now that we've got our trigger in there now we want to take our main spring here and we want to drape that over that and this is the part where we wanted to make sure that this safety spring right here is kind of lined up because this is this is the main spring is threaded on this side so we're going to take that spring the screw that we took out you got to move that spring back in here you got to make sure this is where it's supposed to be here line up the holes like such and then bring your screw in say that let me line up this screw hole one more time here there we go so properly line up that screw hole there put this now you want to make sure that the bend is down towards the trigger so put that up and over like such line up your hole this main spring is threaded on the back side so we're gonna put that there flip it over where's my smaller screwdriver there it is and then we're going to send this home it won't take long you'll feel the other spring kind of rise up on the back side that's a good thing so all right so we got that set up that's in there now we get to put our safety steer in so we're gonna take our spring and our detent put it in the hole in front of the safety spring sear spring and then with this guy you got this groove here on this one side that goes down so this goes in like such making sure that your sear goes in between and on top of well come on detent get in there detent is not wanting to play ball right now so get this inside there like such Push your detent spring in. Got to line that up. There we go. There we go. Got to line that up. 
And then while you kind of got your finger pushed down on this, line up your holes here to where you can see through it. And then with this pin, you want to send the long end down first like this. That way you can kind of line that up with the actual frame part of it. So you kind of finesse that around and you'll feel it kind of sit on top of there. And then just kind of send it home. You'll feel it, you'll feel it grab the frame enough to where you can finish it off with a punch. Now don't go too far on this side because what you want to do is you want to make sure this is flush here. Because you can see by the rub marks that this is you're gonna want that flush, so make sure you're flush on the outside here. You're not so much worried about it in here, but this goes up and over, and now you know this works just like it's supposed to. All right, so now we get to put the hammer in. So put your hammer in here, in this back hole here, right? Go ahead and set that in there. There we go. I like that side better. Once that's lined up, it'll just drop right in there. Now I'll go ahead and finish that off. Good and flush on both sides. Now with this part, you want to push this down, push the hammer on top of it, and then push it down and let it grab the sear. And that is your trigger assembly reinstalled. So now, we're actually gonna get back and start putting the shotgun together. All right, now we're gonna take our charging handle and our breech block link and everything and put it back into this shotgun. All right, so before I get too far into this, before you put this inside here, you wanna take your charging handle, especially now that I got a new block here and took this pin out, you wanna make sure that the groove right here, you can see if I get this focus right there, that groove, you wanna make sure that that's not in the way. If this is too far forward or too far back, it's actually going to stop this from being able to go on top of there. You see how that rides? There's a groove right here. This has to ride inside that groove. So if you get in there, and let me mimic one, if you get in there and it stops like this and you can't get it to work, now obviously this is a gap because I'm lifting up on it, but it's because this is not in the right spot. But if you can take it, push it down, and it goes in smoothly like this, right? Now it doesn't have to go all the way because you got, we got to put it back into the the shotgun itself. But as long as you can get past this point right here, you're good to go ahead and put it back into the shotgun. So what I do is I go ahead and take my charging handle and I go ahead and put it back here. See how it kind of holds itself there in place. Take your link, put it in like such. All right, just like this. Line that up to where it'll go inside. Now to do that, you got to line this front up here. See it's got the grooves on both sides. You line those up. Now what I do here, because I need to get this link out right here, is just let, let gravity do you a favor. Let that link come on and fall down as you push it back in. Grab the link. And then we're going to go ahead and set this up. And now that is set up like it's supposed to be. As you see, now that it's in the fire, now that it's in the shotgun, it moves forward like it's supposed to. All right, now that we got that together, let's go ahead and put our locking bolt latch in. And to do that, we need the actual latch, this piece here, the latch spring, that guy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the spring down inside there, like such. And then the latch itself, if I can get it on my hand here, goes in like this. Go ahead and set this down, and you wanna set this down there flat just like this so what you're going to do is we're going to push down this to line up these holes now remember you got this hole here on the outside and then you've also got to line up this here right here you can see how this right here lines remember how this was lined up before see how it's right there you got to get that latch in there so you're going to get the pin and get it started we're gonna press down until it seats in. Now you can see that it's seated in, and then you can just push it. If you put pressure on this, you can push it in the rest of the way by hand. If you don't feel like you want to, you can also use a punch. But we need to get that to where it's flush. 
So we're gonna take our punch, we're gonna push it just to the other side. You gotta make sure that, that moves smoothly. You don't want any type of resistance there. Not if you can help it. So, nice and smooth there. All right. Now that we got that on there, we're gonna go ahead and put our uh, action spring back in, which is in this back side here. Gonna make sure that our link is right there. So we're gonna take this, remember, the smaller side of this action spring goes in first, the bigger side is in the back because it has the pin. So if you're not sure, the one that has the pinhole goes in the back, the other one goes in first. So we're gonna push that in there, a little bit of resistance, not a lot, but the biggest thing is to make sure that this link lines up with this, just like so. It's gonna push your bolt forward, that's fine. Now you got to hold on to this side as you kind of prep that in there. Make sure you get it good. Now before you get too far, you want to make sure in the back side here that you line up your holes and your pin. So go ahead and twist that around to where it lines up. Put your thumb over top of it. Like such. Get your pin. Come on, get down in there. Oh, get in there, there we go. So push that in. Get that to go the rest of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and use a hammer. There we go. And now your action spring is in. But you gotta make sure that that link is inside this plunger here for your action spring to make sure that it does its job. All right, there we go. All right, next we're gonna do the lifter. All right, so the lifter's gonna go in just like this with this back piece going down. All right, you want to make sure your bolt's all the way forward for this part. So you're going to slide this in, just like such. You're going to slide that in over there. Now what you're looking to do is you have your screw holes here. So you're going to line that up. Don't worry about your set screw right now. You go ahead and using your screws, put that in there, and go ahead and get that started. Now that you got that started, Go ahead and flip this to the other side and do the same thing on this side. You may have to finagle the lifter a little bit to get it to seat. Once you get it good and going, go ahead and send this side home. Now when you do this, sometimes you'll get this to line up perfectly right here. You see how there's little cutouts for the set screw. If it lines up perfectly, awesome. If it doesn't, you need to loosen that up to make sure that your set screw gets lined up. So we're going to go ahead and put the set screw in here. We have our smaller flathead. And go ahead and get our set screw in on this side. It's not quite where it needs to be. I'll move that over just a little bit more and send this the rest of the way home. Just like that. All right, flip that over. Finish this guy up. Same thing. You can see this one kind of goes over past that. You see where this turns right there? So back that up just a little bit and line that set screw up. Now let's go ahead and put the set screw. Come on now, there we go. Good deal. All right, now for your lifter, this is gonna to to come up like this, but you push your button in here, just like you would normally, and it's gonna drop your lifter down. You can come up. All right, so now we gotta put your lifter spring in there. So this is what your lifter spring looks like. And on this side here, you can see that there is your little st stub right there. This goes over that like that. All right, you push that down. Now we're gonna put pressure down on top of this and get it over that side and onto the rest right there. And now the lifter operates like it's supposed to. Then when you take it, push it in, there you go. All right, now we are ready for the trigger assembly itself. 
All right, so this one's a little bit tricky, but it's it can be done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the lifter down. Obviously, you gotta press that button, let the lifter go all the way towards the bolt. We're gonna push the bolt back until the lifter goes all the way down, and then you put pressure with your other thumb on that lifter to where it's in place. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this trigger assembly down into that link right there in front of our bolt and press this down. So we got to get that lined up like such to where it's in there. Now you got to come to this opposite side here where the screw head goes in and put your screw in like such. That is not the right one. Like such. Make sure you got the right screw. Obviously, like you saw, the screws are different sizes, so it kind of prevents you from screwing that up, which is awesome. Savage is smarter than we are. Go ahead and get that going. Kind of press down till you feel that thread start to take. Go ahead and get this guy down in there. And then take your other screw, same thing, line the hole up, press that in, get it down, and send it the rest of the way in. All right, now you can slowly be careful with your thumb because you got all the pressure there. Slowly let that out. And as you can see, like I said before, now that your trigger assembly's in there, your lift gate's where it's supposed to be. And it works like it's supposed to. So now that we've got that the rest of the way in there, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this screw up here. And just like, oops, let's grab the right flathead, please. Uh, and just like on the other side, you wanna get that to where the set screw is in properly lined up. So get that, you can see the set screws lined up there. Go ahead and get that set screw in, switching out our flatheads. There's one. So now we got that nice and flush, that is all good to go. So all we like now is putting on the buttstock. So we're gonna go ahead and do a functions check real quick before we do that. So lock it back, locks back to the rear like it's supposed to. Button, sends it home, safety, trigger falls. We're good to go. All right, let's go ahead and put that buttstock on. All right, now we're ready to do that. Now, if you look at this buttstock, it's got two separate pieces here. You can tell that this is longer and this is shorter here. This is where the bottom of this trigger guard goes, or trigger assembly rather, and then the rest of this goes down on top of here. So go ahead and get that started by putting this in here like such. Going smooth down it. Let it get close. And just hitting it with the palm of your hand on the end of the buttstock. Go ahead and send it home. Now this piece right here, this screw is actually a little, it's the, the angle of it's a little funny. So when you go to put it in there, you kind of got to angle it just right to get that to grab. Once it grabs, you'll know it. Let me get this set screw out of the way here. But you may have to play with the angle just a little bit to get it to seat right. Get it good and tight. Now as you can tell with this one, that alignment is off. So I've got to move one of those rounds to the set screw. Back that off a little bit. And then we're gonna rotate our set screw over to lock it in place. All right. All right guys, now we're gonna go ahead and finish putting this bad boy back together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our friction ring, which is this guy here. Go ahead and put that on. Go our magazine spring that over then we have our friction piece and friction spring these guys here that goes on over top then we're gonna grab our barrel and slide that over line that up all right and push that back now you got to make sure that these right here are lined up so you want this right here to line up with the grooves that are inside here right so it comes down and lines up so you may have to twist it just a little bit to get the line up you'll see it slide in just like that so now we got that slid in place keeping pressure on our barrel we're gonna grab our forearm slide that forearm down up and over still maintaining pressure on the barrel and we're gonna grab our magazine cap and put the magazine cap on 
make sure everything's nice and tight push down the form make sure it's good and tight and there you go all right so lock this back go ahead and show you guys that it is an empty chamber so functions check again safety on nothing safety off sends it on all right now for the fun part let's go outside and shoot this thing all right guys we made it down to the range and I grabbed some shells now these are actually federal premium high uh, Highland birds so what I did is I reset up the friction rings because what you saw in the video is for the low but I reset the friction rings for a little bit higher load because uh, it's what I have right now so if you have any questions about that let me know we'll definitely show you which ones are which uh, but for now I've got this set up for a, a high brass not a magnum load but just a high brass but keep in mind these only take two and three quarters so we're not running three or three and a half out of this thing. So, yeah, let's shut up and start putting rounds down range. What do you say? Yeah, I'd say that worked pretty good. <laughs> I do love me a semi-automatic shotgun. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for this one. It's been a real fun one. I know Jersey's gonna love getting this, getting his hands back on this bad boy now that she's operational. So, yeah, just because you get an old shotgun, it doesn't work. Make sure you get somebody to look it over because it may just be it needs new parts. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us, Suburban Hunt 365. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications. We appreciate you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.